probably be sharing with you later, but it was just an awesome time to get together, to be ministered to. I got to worship. It's kind of funny. There was another woman there, and she was, oh, we both rock around. <laughs> we got to give ourselves room. But uh, anyway, it was an awesome time. That's where I was. But today, I am talking about Jesus, our Valentine. Woohoo! Woo receive God's love, all right? Jesus, our Valentine. We got to receive God's love, all right? Because here's the problem. We've got to receive God's love. If we don't, we're, we're kind of in a mess. Oh. <laughs> so if I don't receive that love from her, am I going to get it? Am I going to feel loved? I'm not going to feel loved, am I? And how do you think she feels when I just walked away? Sad, Sad and hurt, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> And so if I don't take it, come back already. So, but if I take it, then I can receive it, right? And I can feel that love Amen. in her heart. Oh, yes, I get a hug. <laughs> and then I can hug her, right? <laughs> All right? So we've got to receive God's love because the problem is God is pouring out his love for us all the time. He's just loving and loving and loving. But you know what? A lot of us don't feel loved. Did you know that? And a lot of us struggle with feeling God's love, or we know it in our head, but we don't feel it in our heart. But we, the key is we've got to receive it. Because if we just walk away and we don't take it, we're not going to feel the love of God in our life, and we're not going to experience it, right? And Jim Richards says, God's prescription is love. It strengthens the core. Everything else is symptomatic. So if you're having problems in your life, I guarantee you what you need is to discover God's love for you. Because this is going to solve. Because you know what? If you don't know that God's love you, are you going to go to him for prayer? If you don't know that God loves you, are you going to ask him for any help, right? If you don't know that God loves you, you're probably not even going to help your people, right? You have nothing left to give. But we've got to receive God's love. And everything wrong in the world is because of humans using our authority wrongly. Can I just tell you, the issue is, is not that God doesn't love us. You know, we're all plagued by that thing. Well, why does God allow bad things? Here's the, you want, the, you want to know the answer? Here's the answer. Because we humans brought it into this world. Because we humans brought it into this world. And that is why he gives us his authority so that we can bring God's love to the world, that we have authority. Our words have power. Uh oh, I'm throwing love away. That's not good, right? <laughs> our words have power, right? And so we've got to use our authority for the love of God. The problem is we tend to use our authority for our own selfish desires or for the wrong reasons. But the reason that we have issues in this life is because we are using our authority wrongly. It's also because we're not operating out of God's love and we don't have the right concept of who God is. Because if we don't think that God is love, are we going to act loving? Probably not. Right? If we don't think that God is love, we're probably going to do a bunch of stuff because we're not sure he's got our best interests at heart, so we've got to take control ourselves. But God says, I've got it. You, you need to receive my love. You know, and I, I think about it like when, have you ever seen, you know, how sad would it be if you went to a wedding and the bride and groom didn't look like they were in love? <laughs> <laughs> right? And because there's a relationship there, right? So how sad is it was when we, we are the bride of Christ, right? Sorry, guys, you get to be the bride too. Right? <laughs> but we are the bride of Christ, his church. But how many times do we walk around feeling unloved and acting like God doesn't love us? But God says, I loved you. I love you with an everlasting love. Amen? So in Ephesians 3, 14 through 19, this is when I think of all this, I fall to my knees and I pray to the Father the creator of everything in heaven and on earth, and I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, 
He will empower you with inner strength through his spirit, unlimited resources. Do you know that God's love for you is unlimited? Um, my son talked to you about today about how God loves us despite what we've done. Amen. He loves us despite what he's done, and it's unlimited. So it's not like you, you so you sinned a hundred times today. God's like, oh, no more love. You ran out. That's not how that works. <laughs> his love remains. No matter what we do, his love never changes. It does not go up. It does not go down then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will go down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. I want to be complete in Christ, y'all. So then we need to understand God's love. But I love it. So Christ will make his home in your hearts um, as you trust in him. If you've accepted Christ, right, he dwells within us. His Holy Spirit dwells within us. But guess what? We need to keep getting filled and keep getting filled and keep inviting God, right, into our heart. And it says, Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. So as you trust in him with your finances, like I said, Sunday we talked about today, God's love goes through, right? As you trust in him as we go about our lives, as you trust in him by coming to church, right? God's love comes through. As you trust in him by just saying, Lord, here I am, his love invades your heart, right? It's just as we do it. And your roots will go down deep into God's love and keep you strong. Because the problem is our roots aren't deep. And you all know what happens with a plant. If the plant is not rooted or a tree is not rooted, it gets ripped up. As soon as a wind comes, as soon as a storm comes, it gets ripped out. But if our roots are deep, then you just sway around. <laughs> and yes, you get moved by the storms. And yes, it's, it's uncomfortable. But you're there. You're rooted because you know that it is not because God doesn't love you that we go through these things. Because no matter what comes against you, because there will be things that come against us. God said it. I will be with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. But he said that in this life you will have tribulation. Every single one of us will have trials. God didn't promise us no trials, but he promised us that he would always be with us. And if our If we are planted in the love of God, then all we do is sway in the wind. But if we are not planted, it capsizes us. And our roots are ripped out. So we've got to get our roots deep. And I'm going to talk to you today about how we get our roots deep. And and we should understand, the power to understand is all God's people should. So basically it says that we Christians should know how much God loves us. So this is not, so I just want to tell you right now, and you're like, ah, Valentine's, you're talking about love, eh, fluffy, whatever. I'm telling you, God's love is not fluffy. God's love is real, and it is transformative, and it is power, and it says that all God's children need to understand and know his love. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to be understood fully, and then you'll be made complete with all the fullness of life and power. But we have to experience it. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to make a differentiation. Just because you don't feel loved doesn't mean you're not loved, okay? And so we don't rely on our emotions because God's love says, God's word says that we are loved. And so we stand on that even in those times where we don't feel loved. And we're like, nope, God says he loves me. But here's the deal. If we never experience the love of God, we're missing out on something as well. Because God is a heart God, and he wants to connect us heart to heart. He wants us to experience his love. He wants us to fully embrace that. And it says, and it's too great to understand fully, but if we experience his love, catch this, if we experience his love, we will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. So we need to experience his love to be made complete. I want to be complete. And so he says, let me wrap my love around you, right? As we, even today as I'm speaking to you, I want you to think about how much God loves you and let his love wrap around you, right? 
let him love you. Let him experience, let him feel the arms of God around you. Feel his whispered love over you. See him dancing over you with joy. Tell it, see him telling you, I love you, my child. But we've got to experience it. We've got to feel it. And there is going to be times, I know, that there's times that you're not going to experience it. You're not going to feel it. But here's what i got to say. But when you've experienced it, you can remember, nope, God loves me. I'm just going through a rough time right now. Okay? Because God wants to meet us. And, it's, and here's the thing. God's love is endless. It is unlimited. So there's always something new to experience with it. So it doesn't get old. Right? Sometimes you're dating somebody and you're like, eh, don't like him anymore. I kind of got bored, right? You can't get bored with God because there is always depths to his love. <laughs> that was not pointed at anybody. <laughs> All the p- couples are looking at me like, really? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> That's the key to relationship, too, like to go deeper in love, right? All right. So it's experience the love of God, and then we will be made complete. So in order to feel and to receive love, God, we have to experience it, like I said, right? So here, I'm going to let you in a little bit into my marriage. Y'all ready? <laughs> no. <laughs> I am always telling PM, tell me you love me. (laughs) Tell me you love me. (laughs) Do you love me? (laughs) Like, ask him, like, how many times a day I do this, right? Is it true? (laughs) 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 Tell me you love me. Why? Because I need to hear that he loves me. I need to experience that love. I've got to feel it. I, I need to hear it, right? It's not like, and you know, and, and thankfully, he's never looked at me and been like, I told you I loved you at our wedding. If it changes, I'll let you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't do that. He looks at me, and I suppose someti- sometimes it probably drives him up a wall because I've asked him like the hundredth time that day. Anybody ever have days where you just need to really feel loved and you don't, right? <laughs> and so like the hundredth time, he looks at me and he goes, I love you. I love you. I love you. So here's what a key I've got to tell you. If I can ask my husband, do you love me? You can ask God if he loves you. And the answer is always, yes, I love you, my child. I love you. So here's what i got to do. Take after me. God, tell me you love me. I need to hear your love. I need to hear that you love me. God, tell me you love me. Let me feel your love. Let God intervene in your life. Take a time out. Retreat and go, God, I need you to fill me with your love because I'm not feeling very lovely. I'm not feeling very loving. I'm not feeling love right now. And we've got to fill back up our bucket of love. I'm running around on empty. You can say, God, I need to feel your love today. Open up the Bible. What it says. Lord, you said that I am precious. The angels, Lord, you said that I am apple of the eye. Lord, you said that I am a child. Lord, you said that I am beautiful. Let me this word over you. And the Holy Spirit says,
Can I tell you that God is love, and so any shame that we feel is taken away, and he lifts up our head. This is my child. You don't need to be ashamed. I've paid it all. You don't need shame. I love you. Because we're in a love relationship with God, right? We got, he wants us to feel and experience his love. It's a heart-to-heart relationship. Labor into his rest, all right? It takes effort to have a relationship. Anybody been in a relationship? It takes effort. I'm not going to lie. It takes effort. It takes... Every single week, no matter what was going on. If I was sick or he was sick or whatever was happening, we still went on a date. We just told the kids, go to bed. Don't, don't come out unless you're ble- bleeding, Correct. and then we would spend time together intentionally every single week we all know you've heard some of the the hard times in our life when he was thinking that God hated him because if you think God hates you do you think you're very loving no he was not very loving right but we would go out on dates hear me we would still go out on dates even when we hated each other Do you think that took a little bit of work? (laughs) But (laughs) ask my children, are you glad that dad and I went on dates? Yes, (laughs) he says yes. (laughs) 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 All right, because we put in the work to get back to where we needed to be. But guess what? Our relationship with God also takes work. Now, it doesn't take the kind of work that you're thinking. It's not because he's trying to pound into you. It's not because, okay, I'm not loving you because you didn't read enough in your Bible. But if we never spend time with God, your relationship's going to be shallow, right? Now, he's always there when you come back, right? Whatever it's going. If you're like, oh, God, I haven't seen you in like three weeks, but here I am. He's like, he doesn't go, not too late now, (laughs) right? He's like, oh, welcome back. I missed you, right? Did you see us? We we welcomed Deanna and Barbara because they've been out sick, right? We, Ever and Christian, they came, we haven't seen them in a couple of months because they've been moved, right? But what did we do? We ran to them. That's what God does. That's what God does. He runs to us and says, I've missed you. But it takes effort, and sometimes we're not willing to take effort. So when you, are, you know you want to read your Bible, but you don't feel like it, here's what I'm going to tell you. Get out your Bible anyway and ask God to show you his love. When you don't feel like praying... Pray anyway and let him fill you because he wants to connect us to our heart and a heart-to-heart relationship. And can I just tell you, we labor for the wrong things. We try to do more for God. We try to work. We try to earn brownie points. We try to earn his love. That's not what we're talking about. It means, hey, let's labor to just rest in God and to realize that God loves me. Let's labor into being just in a relationship. God's not interested in that you checked off a box. I'm famous for that. Cheeking. I read 22 chapters today. Check. I prayed for three hours today. Check. Okay, that's not very often. But anyway, but you get my point, right? But that's not what God's after. He's after, hi, Daddy. Good morning. Can you tell me you love me today? Right? That's what he's after. He's like, hey, God, I'm having a hard day today. I got a lot of stuff going on at work. Can you help me find a parking space? 
né? God that there is no changeless. Né? So talk to God all day long. And I'm telling you, if you talk to God all day long, you're going to start feeling love. Because when you're like, God, I need a parking space and one appears before you, you'll be like, oh, God loves me. Right? When you're talking to God and you're like, ah, oh, I'm having a rough day, and you feel that peace come upon you, you're going to recognize that God loves you. Because he wants to connect to our hearts. And it's despite what we do, right? In Ephesians, again, 314 through 21 in the message, and it's, you read it, but it's a different version, right? My response is to get down on my knees before the Father. My response. We have to respond to God's love. My response is to get down on my knees. Lord, I need you. I love you. Right? This magnificent Father who parcels out all heaven and earth, I ask him to strengthen you by his spirit, not a brute strength, strength but a glorious inner strength. You need strength to get through your day? Get grounded in the love of God because you will find strength he's never known. That Christ will live in you as you open the door and invite him in. Did you know we have to invite him in? We have to invite him into every single area of our life. Just that, that area in your life that you want to hide from God and you don't want him to see, you need to invite him in and say, love me here, Lord, because I need your love to push out this junk. Whatever hole is in your heart, Lord, I invite you in here. I need your love. Whatever pain, whatever sorrow you have in your heart, Lord, I invite you into my pain because I need healing from your love. But we have to open our door because he is a gentleman who never forces us. He gives us free will. And I ask that with both feet planted firmly on love, like I talked about, right? Firmly on love. The problem is that we plant our feet on performance. And then we fall down. We plant our feet on emotions, and we fall down. We plant our feet in other people, and we fall down. Right? And we trip over things. But our feet planted in love. You'll be able to take in with all the followers of Jesus the extravagant dimensions of Christ's love. Reach out and experience the breadth. Reach out. Reach out and grab a hold of God. And experience his breath, test its length, plumb the depths, rise to the heights, live full lives, full in the fullness of God. God can do anything, you know, for more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us, his spirit deeply and gently within us. God's love is always gentle and kind. If you're not feeling his gentleness and his kindness, you don't actually know the love of God yet. God's love changes us, but it's responding to the love of God is what roots us in his love. So I might love Pierre, and he like love, might love me, but if we never do anything together, how is that love going to be felt? And how long is it going to last? Not, right? If I don't respond to his love, I'm not going to feel it in response. Right? We've got to respond. It's a relationship. If I keep doing things, right, you know, um, he gave me flowers, right? If I don't respond to be like, here, here's some chocolate-covered raisins, we're, we're not going to feel love, right? It's a response. We have to respond. In 1 John 4, 9 through 10, it says, God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Amen? That's how God, you wonder, you're like, hey, I got this situation, I got this situation, I got that circumstance, this circumstance. God doesn't love me. He says, don't look at that, look at the cross. Look at the cross. That's where you find out whether I love you or not. Everyone who loves is born of God and experiences a relationship with God. The person who refuses to love doesn't know the first thing about God because God is love. So you can't know him if you don't know love. 
And this is how God showed his love for us. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. This is the kind of love we're talking about. Not that we once upon a time loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to clear away our sins and the damage they've done to our relationship with God. He first loved us. It talks about receiving. Sometimes there's things in our life, right? And so we are a little hesitant to receive love because love has burned us in the past. But God says, I am trustworthy. I am faithful. I will never hurt you. Right? And so if we refuse to love, we will not understand God's love. And if we refuse to love God back, we're not going to understand his love. In the first John 4, 19, it says, we love because he first loved us. I like the love message. We, though, are going to love, love and be loved. Reciprocal, right? First we were loved, now we love. He loved us. He loved us first. And we love, like I said, because God loved us first. But we have to respond. Right? But here's what I got to tell you. So when my boys were little, actually, even when they were a little bit older, when my boys were little, they would buy me flowers, sometimes from the dollar store, that were fake. <laughs> but do you want to know why they bought me fake flowers? So it would last. So it would last. They're like, Mom, we don't want our flower to die. But I want you to give me a pretty flower. I want to. So what were they doing? They were responding to the love I gave them. Now, what if they, what would have happened if I would they would have handed me this and I was like, these are fake from the dollar store. <laughs> <laughs> What would that have done to their heart? It would have broken it, right? But how many times do we throw God's flower back in the store? How many times do we throw God's flower back in the store? Because God accepts our feeble attempts at love, right? He knows that we're just little children. And he's like, you know what, dollar store flower, you, you, you spent all your money on that. <laughs> I love you too. You don't want your love to fade, I love you too. And God takes what we offer him. Right? And it receives means we have to take hold of something and bring it to yourself. So you know what my daughters did? Because I used to get flowers from Tina, right? Well, I still do, but when they were little is what I mean, right? So guess what? My daughter's like, we want flowers. Do I really care about flowers? No, but mommy got flowers, and so we need flowers too, correct? <laughs> <laughs> we want flowers. Now, what did Pam do? She'd be like, flowers are for your mom. You're just a little kid. Is that what he did? No. He bought them flowers because God gives us what we need, and when we ask for it, he gives it to us. He gives us the flower. He gives us that love. And here's what they were doing. They were trying to receive love from their dad, right? And then they brought it to themselves. When they looked at those flowers, they're like, God loves me. So when you receive the love of God, bring it to yourself and say, God loves me. God loves me. Hang on to it. Don't toss it away. Last one out of cow. Completed love is given and received. <laughs> Imagine someone waiting your, their entire lifetime for you, right? John 3.16. That's what God does for us. If you haven't received God yet, that's what God's doing right now. He's waiting for you. And if you have received him, he wants to come and have a rom not romantic, not in a, like a bad way, but in a, he wants to have a loving dinner with you. An intimate, thank you, an intimate dinner with you. He wants a relationship with you. He wants to go hang out with you. And he's waiting. He's waiting right now. So, the other thing, I like 
singing animals, all right? So I make sure. <laughs> but guess what? I know it's silly, but do I feel loved? Because he knows I like them, right? God wants to give you your own singing animal because he sings over us. He rejoices over us. He dances with us. And he's like, come dance with me. Come hang out with me. I want you. I love you. Right? He loves us. He loves us. But we've got to respond to God's love. We have to respond. It's not something we go, oh, that's nice, because that just hit our heads. We've got to go into our hearts. We've got not just to have the knowledge, but the experience. Because there are some things that can only be known by those who respond to God's love. And here's what i got to tell you. Super Bowl's coming, right? All right. How many of us are going to be, like, cheering for the Super Bowl? Okay, I got, I, there's a lot more than you. I know Josue back there, but the rest of y'all are lying. I know you all cheer. <laughs> right? And if it's not for that, there's things that we go and we, res- guess what, we're responding. When our team wins, we're excited, right? When our team is winning, we're like, yay, go, touchdown, right? So we need to respond to God's love. And here's what I'm going to tell you. Some of us will be like, you know what, that's not my personality, right? But, you know, you can be quiet. It's okay. But respond. Open up your heart. Open up your hands. Just worship God. Respond to God's love. But here's what I'm going to tell you. Don't tell me it's not your personality if I see you cheering at the Super Bowl. (laughs) 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 Because if you're cheering at the Super Bowl... We can cheer for God, amen? Amen. The creator of the universe, our father in heaven that loves us, right? (laughs) And not everyone experiences God's love, but not because God doesn't love them. God loves them. He's throwing out love all over the place. He's like, I love you. I love you, right? Left. I love you. But look, none of y'all caught my love, right? (laughs) So if you don't catch and receive and take to your heart God's love, you don't feel it. You don't experience it. But God is, doesn't mean that God isn't loving. It means that you're missing it, right? You're not stopping and experiencing the love of God. God loves us. Those that have a transparent relationship with God experience it. So guess what? You can be real with God. You can be like, you know what? This sucks. I don't like this one bit. I don't like it at all. And God's like, it's okay. I love you. I'm going to be with you. You can be like, hey, I'm super excited today. But God is throwing out his love for you. And if you respond in love, guess what? You're going to feel more love. You can't help it. What happens early on in a relationship, right? What are you guys doing? You're calling each other up, right? You're saying, I love you, right? (laughs) <laughs> we're going out to dinner. We're, we're, I mean, even even shopping is fun in the beginning, right? <laughs> right? And we're doing all these things, and we're buying little presents just because, right? And we're saying we're sending little texts with little emojis, <laughs> right? <laughs> but then what happens if we stop doing that? Guess what? You stop feel, you stop feeling those little butterflies. But the, if you, but here's the key: if you start doing those things again, the feeling come back. So if you stop throwing emojis at God, <laughs> 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 if you stop kind of wanting to hang out with Him, all you got to do is start doing that again, and you will start feeling His love. Proverbs 27, 5, it's better an open reprimand than concealed love, or an open rebuke is better than hidden love, or it's better than approval that's never expressed. If I never told TM that I love him, is that good for our relationship? If I never told the worship team that I'm I'm proud of them, 
and that I approve of them? Does that help them? No, right? We have to express, and I think that's where we miss out. We forget to express our love to God and to each other. Because you can tell somebody the truth in love, and it's actually loving. If I see a woman, and she's got toilet paper hanging out her back end, <laughs> like, and I say, hey, Katie, hold up, there's like toilet paper. Like, that's loving, right? <laughs> I'm saying there's a problem, but that's loving. What if I don't do anything about that? Not so loving. Then they get to go out and be embarrassed, right? So we've got to express our love. But I know that some of us wrestle with the goodness of God. So I'm going to ask you right now, are you wrestling with doubts and questions about God? And I'm going to be honest with you. I had to wrestle through that. Y'all, have ta- I've heard that I've had trauma in my life. And so there was, I was just telling my mom the other day, like I used to hate Psalm 91 because it said that God would protect me. And I'm like, it says God would protect me, but I wasn't protected. What happened? God must not love me. I was in a car accident almost killed somebody. Where was God? Dealing with the shame of both of those things. Where is the goodness of God? Well, here's what I'm going to tell you. What I wrestled through, and trust me, I needed to wrestle. I searched the scriptures, and I underlined everything about loving, and I went to God, and I literally sat at the altar, (laughs) and I said, God, You say you love me, but all of these things have happened in my life. I don't understand, and I don't like it. And how do you expect me to think to love you? And I wrestled through. And what I came up with is that we live in a fallen world. It's an evil world that we brought in, and we humans bring horrible things to each other. But God says he will never leave me for forsake me. And God showed me, because I asked him, I'm like, God, where were you <laughs> when I was being molested? And he says, I was weeping for you. And I was preparing a path for you for healing. Where was he? He was right there when I was 19 and 18 weeping at the altar, and he's like, I've got you, my daughter. You're going to get through this. And when everybody told me that I would deal with that shame and that pain for the rest of my life, God says, that's not what I have for you, my daughter. Amen. That's where the goodness of God was. The goodness of God was the women who had been through similar things took me aside and said, my dear God will get you through. I have not. Despite the things that I have gone through in life, God has proven himself faithful. Love is when a man wipes away your tears even after you left him hanging on the cross for your sins. You know that Jesus is going to wipe away all your sins. Even those times where like we forget about him, we think about it, and we're like, you know what? Even if we've not accepted him, he's loving you. That's what love is. here's the problem. If we don't receive God's love, we are in in effect rejecting it. I don't think any of us want to reject the love of God because we we acknowledge in our head. But when we refuse to receive it, we are in effect rejecting it. So here's a prayer for y'all. You ready? Dear Jesus, I give you permission to ravish my heart. (laughs) Help me set aside anything that distracts me or weighs me down. Then I will behold more of your goodness, beauty, and become captivated by you. I'll take your hand and follow wherever you lead. And so when we talk about ev- giving up everything to follow Jesus, it might be helpful to start by taking small steps toward this. So let's just start lifting your hands up to worship, right? Ask God to provide you an opportunity to pray for somebody. Just take those first steps. But ask God, come love my heart. Give him permission to enter into your heart. So what kind of love do you need? Because God is there for everyone. He's our king and he's our lord and our master, but he's also our father. And here's what I mean. If you need a father or a mother, because there's lots of scriptures in the Bible about how God has a mother's heart as well. Both men and women were formed from God, right? 
But if you need a father who is there, if you need a mother who is there, if you need a brother who is there, if you need a spouse who is there, a sister who is there, right? Your friend who is there. Whatever you need, he is able to do that. But don't replace God's love with human love. And we all need love, and it is good to have relationships, but don't replace God's love for human love, right? Human love is the cherry on the top. It's not the entree, nor is it even the dessert. It's the cherry, <laughs> right? Worship team, if you could start coming up. Don't let the love of God be an excuse to sin. Yes, God loves us. He loves us with an everlasting love, and no matter what we do, he will continue to love us. But we, again, we are in a relationship. I don't cheat on Pastor Martin because he loves me, right? Just because somebody loves you doesn't mean that we go and, well, it doesn't matter. He loves me, so I can do, I can act any way I, belo- I, I, I like. Is that going to be okay? All right. The fear of God isn't really like being in terror, but it, we don't want to break God's heart because he's too precious for us. Hearing and believing is obeying. So we're not going to hear if we're not willing to obey. So here's what I'm going to tell you. You won't recognize God's love if you're not willing to follow him. He's still loving you, but you won't receive it. Because God gave you a new heart, and it became soft. And our heart, our new heart, is sensitive to anything that would touch it. So we've got to guard our heart and watch what we put into it because our heart is now soft and pliable. So if we are listening to things that harm our heart, our heart will be harmed. If we're listening to things that will uplift it, our heart will be healed, right? You didn't get new beliefs when you were born again, but your, your heart was shielded, right? With those beliefs, we've got to change our beliefs or we're not going to recognize or feel God's love. Right? We have to change our beliefs. We want to receive God's love. And I just want to end with a song, but read. Here's your homework. Read 1 Corinthians 13 and go through this at home. Right? It's 4 through 7. I've got the Amplified up there. You can do all of that. But here's what i got to tell you. Go through the Bible and read all the things about how he says he loves you. As you read this thing, this is also about how we love, Right? But this is everything that God is because God is love. So God is patient with us. Amen? So I just wanted us to have a time. Y'all will rise unless you have issues. <laughs> and so um, but everybody can rise, right? Can we just receive? Figuratively, let the love of God fall on you. Let it wrap around you. All right? Can we lift up our hands to God and say, Jesus, you're my daddy, and I need your love. I need you. I love you. Will you tell me that you love me today? Jesus, tell us you love us today. We need to hear that you love us today. Open up your heart and receive the love that God has for you.
shame's is deeper. My shame is wide. Your arms go wider. That you lift up my head is great. That you said there is no more. Your love is greater still. Yeah, your love, your love. My sin was. My sin was deep. Your grace was deeper. My shame was one. We love you. We love you. We thank you that you love us. My guilt is great. Your love is greater still. that we might know true love. Some of us for the very first time. Talk to God right now. Tell him. Tell him in your own words what you need from him. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him that you want to respond to his love right now. Respond to the love that God has shed forth. Respond however that is. Whether you want to kneel, whether you want to raise your hand, whether you want to shout, whether you want to sing, whatever it is, respond. Respond right now.
have a moment in time where you can look back and like, I experienced the love of God. Let his love break through all of our busyness, all of our thoughts, all of the things that we've got to do. Let God's love love you. We thank you, God, Lord, that you are God of the universe. We thank you, Lord, that you are King of our lives. Lord, we thank you that you have met us here today. Lord, we thank you that you're not just a God that stays afar off, but Lord, that you entered in. Lord, your son, Jesus, came on earth and lived our life so that you would know exactly what we we're going through. Lord, thank you, Lord, that you came and you suffered on this earth. You were hungry. Lord, you were sorrowful. You were betrayed. You were condemned. But Lord, you prevailed and you rose again and you have come and you rose again and you have made a way for us to be with you forever. You fixed the rift that humans made and you made a way for us to be your friend. So Lord, we thank you that you're our friend. Lord, we thank you that you have all the love that we need. We thank you, God, Lord, that you will never leave us or forsake us. I thank you, God, that you have forgiven us. I thank you, God, that you've accepted us into your kingdom. I thank you, God, that you have welcomed us into your family, that we are adopted into you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you and we receive your love. Can we say that, church? We receive your love. We receive your love. We receive your love. We receive your love. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen and amen. So God wants to tell you happy Valentine's Day. So whether you have a Valentine or not, I want you to know that you do. And your valentine is better than those who have a valentine on earth. All right? Because you have a heavenly valentine that will love you with an eternal, everlasting love. <laughs> so receive the valentine from God, all right? And when he tells you he loves you, he's going to, you tell him, I love you more. But then when you say, I love you, guess what? God's going to say, I love you. Got it? Receive the love of God. As we go into the February, it's not the, continue for the whole year through. But in February, can I just tell you, know that you have a Valentine that loves you. And receive, choose to receive his love. Amen? Amen. 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 Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Go in the love of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Awesome. So we also have, we always have refreshments. Please make sure you do that. Greet somebody. Guess what? Spread the love of God around. So go, oh, good job. They're already doing it. Go hug somebody's oh, neck. Yeah. <laughs> go do everything that you've got, right? Hug people, and we will go to lunch as well. Yeah, real quick, if any of you want Sandy's phone number, you want to give her a call, or if any of you can give her a visit, I have permission to give you her phone number.